What's up, everybody? You're listening to another episode of The Signature Cast, where we talk bodybuilding, business, and everything in between. Today is one of those in-between episodes. I am joined with a friend of Signature Fitness, a local community member, L-E-Y Katz. Ellie, thank you so much for coming on today. We also have CEO of Signature Fitness, Warren Feldman. This is going to be a very interesting episode. We're going to talk about community. We're going to talk about wellness. We're going to talk about business and a lot of other subjects. First and foremost, Ellie, thank you so much for coming on today. Please give the viewers at home a little bit about yourself and what brought you into the doors of Signature Fitness. So, Will, thank you very much for having me, Warren. It's an honor to be here in your studio, but in your Signature Fitness Center Every time I walk through the doors, I am so in awe of the amazing facility you have here. Um, and I'm also envious of uh, all the people working out. And I wish that that was me. I live vicariously through some of them. <laughs> um, but you really have a state-of-the-art, unbelievable studio here in Belleville. And I really appreciate you uh, welcoming me here. Of course, us, and we always want people from all walks of life and all over our community uh, to come through our doors as much as possible. But it don't you don't have to live vicariously. We'll we'll get you in here. I'm bringing my son. My son <laughs> loves to work out, and I think that he will end up moving in here when he sees what you have here in Belleville. Oh yeah, well, and we'll get you to stick around with him. Don't worry. Okay. Well, I'll get you on that treadmill. As long as you <laughs> as long as you promise me that after a couple of weeks, I have the same body build or 10 percent of what you got. Oh, we'll make that happen. Trust okay. me, if, if I could keep up with what Warren does on the Stairmaster, I'd be in the best shape of my life. But a little bit about yourself. So I know you've done a little bit of politics. You've done a little bit of business. Um, you've really, Warren has spoken very highly of you of being able to really work up that ladder of life and become not just part of a, a great business community, but become part of your community, whether it's um, within your own religious community um, and within your family as well. So a little background, you, you currently are still working um, in any type of politics yeah, or are so, you doing business stuff so at the first moment? First of all, I want to say that I'm actually the one who's a big fan of Warren. I'm so <laughs> impressed. And I know that this is his, his, his studio and his business, so I'm not looking to butter him up too much in public. But I'm so impressed with how egoless he is. He walks around. He just gives. He helps. He's just a wonderful person, and I learn from him. But uh, as far as me, I was born in Teaneck, raised in Teaneck, um, and then um, like anything else, um, like the PTA mom or the PTO mom that starts, you know, one volunteering in the school. My way of giving back was to help out in the community. So I first started on the Teaneck Volunteer Ambulance Corps when I was 15 years old. I did over 2,500 ambulance calls, and I became a life member. Then I joined the Teaneck Fire Department, Box 54, which is um, we went to fires all over Bergen County. And uh, not only do we serve as a communications truck for the fire uh, and for, this, for the situation that was going on there, but what's, we also served food and like Gatorade, you know, in order to make sure that these firefighters didn't overheat or have any uh, medical issues. So we made sure to give them uh, food, and sometimes we'd be at fires for days. And then as I'm getting more involved in the community, I went and got involved in the, in the Youth Advisory Board. I was the first chairman in Teaneck of the Youth Advisory Board. And then um, the mayor asked me to be on the Teaneck Municipal Alliance Against Substance Abuse. Uh, I have no idea what that was at the time, but then the, obviously I know the name, I understand the name. Um, so I came in for a meeting and uh, I was interviewed and as I'm walking out, the mayor came to me and said, what are you doing these days? And I was about 21 at the time, 22. I said, I've got my own uh, real estate, some restaurants, you know, doing some business. He said, well, why don't you run for council? So I said, no, thank you, mayor. Um, <laughs> I don't like politics and I don't like most politicians. Oh, it's not, it's getting, you know. No, it's no problem. Easy. Four hours a week, blah, blah, blah. And uh, 26 years later, I am the former mayor, the youngest council member, youngest mayor, youngest deputy mayor, and current deputy mayor of Teaneck. Wow. Congratulations. Yes. That was definitely, uh, it took 26 years, but you're definitely uh, further in the deep end of politics than you thought yes. you would start out at. And, and Will, now I could sit here confidently between the two of you, or in between as you called me, and tell you that why I don't like politics and why I don't like most politicians. 
Now I've got the, you know, the subject. The now, now you understand it now completely. Now I fully understand what I meant 26 <laughs> years ago. Well, then let me let me ask you this first question. Um, we have had some other politicians on the podcast. We've yeah. had other businessmen as well. What do you think in your life has made you separate yourself um, from those, you know, standard ideas of what people believe a politician is or or always uh, never lives up to? You know, like what what made you stand out and and what so what will, made will, you a different politician? I will tell you that I think most politicians, you know, listen, politicians get a bad rap, right? It's almost like a, a dirty word. Yeah, I think most politicians start off altruistically. They want to help their community. You know, they started off whatever. But then I I do think a sometimes they realize that it's very hard to write that ship. It's very hard to move. Very. You're, you're, you're not just by yourself. You have to work with other people, and then they get frustrated. But I also think that some people look at it as a career path, and, you know, I'm going to climb the ladder. I'm going to start off here, and I'm going to end up going somewhere else and then somewhere else and then somewhere else. So I'm not going to ruffle any feathers. I'm not going to, you know, do anything that's controversial that someone can Google, and they say, oh, you know, this politician voted against this when he was council member. So with that said... I have no interest in higher office, never did. I care about my town, Teaneck, and that is what I work on. Now, listen, I'm not perfect, and I certainly ruffle feathers, um, <laughs> but I do what I think is best for the community, um, and that's how I do it, and I, and I don't need the job, right? So I'm mm -hmm. not looking for a job. You know, a, lot of, a lot of politicians, they're like, also work for this county and this municipality and this. I don't need the job. Thank goodness I have a day job. I have my own investments. Um, so... You know, I do what I can uh, on a daily basis to help my community. I, I think that's what it's all about. You know, Warren, as you've seen, you know, you came into the business of Signature Fitness from somewhere else, and you've noticed how much of a community it is here as well. So I'm sure both of you have had many conversations about how that those relate in many ways. So Warren almost in a way is is trying to be one of those good politicians here at Signature Fitness. You know, sometimes you got to do what's right not just trying to work up that ladder and just try to make everybody happy. Sometimes you're going to make the tough decisions. And I think uh, Signature Fitness is much better off for it, Warren. So we'd like to thank you for that. But Warren, how, how, how would you say uh, uh, your, your role here at Signature Fitness has, has almost kind of played like a political role in, in how you've moved us forward and how maybe Ellie can uh, step in and help us here too? I get a lot of pleasure by seeing the members of, of Signature, the staff of Signature, happy, um, enjoying themselves in an environment where they can be productive and advance and become more fit uh, physically and mentally. I was on a campaign trail with Ellie this year when he ran for office once again and went to uh, many events with him, and I saw that he, he does what a good businessman does. He thinks about the customer. He thinks about what they need. How can he be of help to them in their life that they're struggling with some kind of difficulty? Um, how can he extend a hand from his position of strength, having been you know, a leader in the community and a, with special knowledge of how the system in this area, this county, this state, this world works? Um, I enjoyed those events. Um, Ellie and I have enjoyed time together uh, uh, in business. Uh, I've had the pleasure of investing with him, uh, not just in uh, New Jersey, but in uh, widespread areas and property. And we feel the same way. We, we look out and we think, we obviously think about ourselves. We think about creating satisfaction for ourselves. But very importantly, you have to gain uh, pleasure by seeing advances in the lives of others around you. It could be your family, it could be, uh, it could be members of a, of a fitness center, it could be the people in, in, in the town like Teaneck, which is a town with almost 50,000 or more people, very diverse population. There's a lot of similarities between Teaneck and Signature in the sense that Teaneck is very diverse, has a big Jewish community, has a very different ethnic cultures within the community. Our, our gym, has a very diverse culture as well. We have 8,000 members here. Um, we have a significant Latino population. We have a, uh, a very diverse community, a, a black community. And uh, 
very, very diverse, and it's a family, and uh, the family gets better as people work together. Um, we work together to advance the, co the, the lives of each other. We keep, it, we keep it safe, we keep it clean, we keep it responsive, and this is where Ellie and I are in such agreement always about how we treat uh, uh, our lives in business, in investments, and in politics. Very interesting. Now, Ali, oh, right before we started, you handed me your business card, and, and something definitely stood out for me. You told me to save it for when we well, for when we start the podcast. I have never received a business card that also was in Braille. Now, I think that's something very interesting. A lot of the viewers may not know, but years ago, I worked at a Girl Scout camp, um, and I was uh, working for their sports and games and all that type of stuff. But um, we had a lot of people who had all different types of special needs, whether they were mentally uh, needed help or physically needed help. Um, and that really, that, that said a lot to me. That said a lot to me of, of your character and, and what you think of, um, because that's a small detail that a lot of people would definitely um, bypass and think it's not necessary. Um, where did, how did you even think of that? that just, I'm just going to leave that question because that's, that's really amazing. For anybody who's watching on YouTube, this is his business card, and, and it has the texture of Braille. And, and obviously, if you were looking at it, you would see everything here. So what made you do that? So first of all, I will tell you that that really does say L-E-Y cats on it in <laughs> Braille. And I know that because I once gave a business card to somebody and about 20 minutes later, I saw a Facebook post. You know, they say, oh, you're tagged in a Facebook post. And you see a blind person in a bank holding my card and reading it. And, and the woman who I gave the card to, she's like, what does it say? It says, Ellie, why, cats? You know, and you read the whole thing. Um, so I'm glad that I was getting my money's worth because, you know, you don't know when you send it out to get the Braille if it just comes back with a bunch of dots or if it actually says your name. But with that said, in 2008, I started with Reverend Dan Mays and Teaneck a food pantry when the world fell apart the first time, you know, uh, 14 years ago, 15 years ago now. Um, and um, I had an amazing friend, Janice Brichel, who dedicated every single day of her life, morning and night, volunteer to help this food pantry. And uh, we're serving over 100 something families. Today we're serving over 160 families a week. Um, and then about uh, five, six years into it, she had some pain in her arm, and literally four hours after going to the emergency room, she was blind for life. Wow. So I have a, a sensitivity to all special needs, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. and certainly um, for blind people and appreciation for Janice and all the, her hard work that she's done. So I actually I have it on all my cards. I mean, I only have two cards. I have my business card and I have my, my council deputy mayor card. And both of them, I don't have the taxpayers or my business pay for it. I pay for it out of my own pocket. I, you know, my, the town gives me the business cards, but then I pay for the Braille portion. You have to send it out to special service. Uh, sadly, Janice Brichel was one of the first losses during the beginning of COVID. Um, the governor of New Jersey actually announced her. Like, that's how prominent it was, um, you know, during his daily briefings. Um, but with that said, I still keep the Braille and uh, keep still keep the sensitivity going. That's fantastic. I and mean, that really speaks to your character as well. I, I love that. And that's something um, I'm going to keep this forever because that's really, really interesting. And, and I think that's that's a, a detail that more people need to start adding. And I, I'm sure it's a cost, but it's a well worth cost that um, thank you. We can we can all definitely take a page out of the book for. So what's new in the life of Ellie Katz? You are oh. currently the deputy mayor of TNEC, correct? Yes. Right? Yes. I just um, won another election, as Warren mentioned. Congratulations. And, and Warren was a big help. You know, he was just, he's just a good friend. He's just a good friend. Sometimes, especially when you're running and you're tunnel visioned, you need that person to be able to communicate to. And, and he's, he's always there and makes himself available, not just to me, but as he mentioned and as you know, to every one of these 8,000 members, if they care to ask, he's, he makes himself accessible. Will, you talked, I want Elliot to talk about the question of uh, when you deal with a difficulty, uh, you know, our, our issues here pale next to what goes on in a, in a, in a town like Teaneck and some of the business uh, matters that Delhi works with. What, what do you do when there's really a tense problem, uh, a neighbor with a neighbor, a, a you know, business uh, having, having tension in the town with the council? What, what is the secret to the success of Teaneck? The Teaneck has thrived 
property values are, are up. Commerce is very strong. Uh, it's the centerpiece to the various communities, including the Jewish community, and thriving, uh, thriving system. What, but what do you do when you have a difficulty? How do you deal with the tension? How do you deal with the, with the fight that goes on? Okay, so let's, I will just tell you a little bit about Teaneck for those who are not so familiar with it. About 12 minutes from the George Washington Bridge, Bergen County, New Jersey. Um, and it's got about 40,000 residents. Um, and it's all different types of race, religions, backgrounds, colors, multicultural, 57 houses of worship, 23 parks, a hotel, two hotels now actually, a university and a hospital plus three highways that run through it, Route 80, Route 95, and Route 4. Um, so great place to live if you're looking. Um, we have a couple of homes available, but you asked about tensions. There's Quality of life is something that I focus on very heavily. I make myself accessible to every single resident um, in every single corner of town. Once a month, I send out uh, what I call my Ellie White Katz's Teaneck Tidbits. And uh, I give my, it's my personal email that I send out to 28,000 people, um, sometimes a little bit beyond the Teaneck borders. Um, but it tells a little bit about what's going on and around town and, and different things that are available, services, et cetera. During COVID, I would send out a daily email. Um, at one point, you know, I got an I got an alert from my email service that like in thirty something days, I sent out about three hundred something thousand emails. I was like, oh wow, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a lot of. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, but uh, there are neighbor issues, and it's it, it really um, runs the gamut. Uh, I'll tell you the neighbor issue that I got yesterday, which was someone was building a. Uh, and I won't get so specific because it, it then people know who this neighbor is, but someone was building something and they put in some lights and uh, the neighbor next door felt that the lights were, were not appropriate. So that's one type of situation. You have parking issues. You know, that's another. They have, you have personality issues. You have, you know, people that are just, you know, uh, don't like certain uh, races and religions. You know, I found, you know, I was with, I was with the U.S. attorney yesterday and uh, for just a, a gathering um, um, on how to, how to, you know, uh, help communities with uh, these hate crimes, which are on the rise. Um, and certainly Teaneck has its share of people that are just not nice to each other. Uh, how's that for uh, candy coating? <laughs> pretty good, right? Well, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, I'm still a politician. <laughs> um and I said, you know what, a lot of it, I think, stems from right now, the social media, and just anybody can write anything about anybody online, Some, a lot of it anonymous, and you know, there's really no way to counteract, and it feeds into people's feelings, it feeds into people's emotions, and there's people that are having bad days, bad weeks, bad years, bad lives, whatever that reason is, financial, family, and I think that it, it exacerbates, you know, problems. Um, so that's another type of scenarios that we deal with um, when you have these, you know, these social media hate or fights or dis disagreements. Well, let's um, let me just say one thing. Let's talk about that for a second, this yeah. issue of bullies and bigots yeah. in society yes. in whatever form. Uh, Will, you know, we've seen... Mm -hmm. we, we see that we read about it. Let's let's talk about that just for a minute because uh, the, you too can really address that. I, sure. I you know, Will, you are a professional arm wrestler. Correct. You're a, you're a strong man. Um, you're a central uh, leader at this at this gym mm -hmm. and beyond in your community. You you know you know how to deal with someone who's bullying someone else. And I, I don't think anyone, let's talk about anyone's that. bullying. Will, that's for sure. Well, well Elliot, I'm I'm or, I'm, I'm, I'm glad not bullying you either. I'm I'm, I'm, talk about I'm glad you brought that up though. So it's a, it's an interesting not story. To talk about it. That's well, for sure. so I was not always this size. Oh, okay. Um, and back in the day, I was a bit of a you know we'll call it a chunker, a little meatball, right? And it wasn't until about high school where I finally like you know had the growth spurt and all that stuff. But honestly. I think that the number one thing that you hit the, the nail on the head was with it's what's happening with social media now. Unfortunately, people have lost the art of um, debate. They've lost the art to talk to people and to disagree with them in person verbally. 
everyone now, they feel so strong and so confident behind a keyboard or behind a cell phone that they don't know what it's like to actually talk to someone and tell them that you disagree with them or insult them and this and that, whatever. That Then when it happens to them in person, they either cannot handle it um, or B, even if now it happens behind the screen on your phone, they can't handle it either. And I think, unfortunately, what's happening in our, in our communities and in the world right now is we're becoming so sheltered because of technology. We can't have discussions in person anymore. You're seeing it, as you just mentioned, you know, unfortunately, um, hate crimes are on the rise, yeah. right? I, I don't know about you, but 20 years ago, I know there's always been problems. Yes. But, but now I think but it's, a, now it's, a lot more it's so visible much more visible and... It, it, Right? Ex- it's accepted. It's accepted. And that's accepted. the issue. Before, you know, like I have I have very good friends who are Muslim. I have very good friends who are Jewish. I have very good friends who are, are who, who practice Hinduism. And we all get along and we all hang out. And you know what? It never gets brought up ever because we, we grew up together and we, we just respected each other and they did their thing and I did mine and that was it. And now I feel it's become weaponized. And, and, and they, you've been told that, well, because, because you're not like me and I'm not like you, we can't like each other and we have to hate each other as where when I was growing up, it was like, oh, well, that's a beautiful religion and you should respect it. And that's a beautiful thing. And it all comes down to the fact that nobody talks to each other anymore. Nobody sits well, down well, and has a has a nice has a nice uh, discussion when they're working out at Signature Fitness or or when they're getting a cup of coffee with their friend. No one no one can sit down and have a nice conversation but, and walk away n- disagreeing. I'll leave it at that. No one knows how to walk away right. and happily disagree. Well, well what what are they Ellie, What are they talking about in the in the capital of uh, the county and the state capital and the capital in Washington? What what are what are politicians doing? What are the leaders in our country and business and politics doing to confront you know, what you perceive to be a serious issue? What do you well, see and how, would you, how are you leading? Well, first thing they're doing is they're running for office and they're attacking each other and attacking each other's personality and getting dirty with their election. And then after they do all this dirty hate mails and, and uh, uh, you know, these schmear campaigns, they get elected and they're like, okay, now let's write anti-bullying laws for our kids. So uh, I think they're, they're leading by a poor example. <laughs> That's a great point. You know, so I just, I just recently voted in, in Lyndhurst, right, for the local election. And I, cause I had just moved to Lyndhurst. And n- this isn't my first time voting. So I used to live in Nutley. And I had never received, I couldn't believe it, in the mail. And it was from both sides. Yeah. These pamphlets printed out with just the most horrible, horrible things printed on them. And I'm like, not that I believed either side was true, but as I'm reading this pamphlet, I'm saying to myself, why would I vote for you when all you're doing is just blatantly just trying to just smear the person on the opposite side? You're not telling me one good thing that you're going to do. You're just telling me all the bad things they're doing. Correct. It's say anything to get elected. It's sad. I listen, I just ran for election. I had printing presses going every day about me, about, you know, in all different areas. Oh, you're for this? Oh, Ellie Katz is against this. Oh, you want this? Oh, Ellie Katz doesn't want this. You know, depending upon what the area was, you know, Ellie Katz takes candy from kids. You know, it's like, oh, boy, we can't. Evoke. But I will tell you that um, you have a lot of residents that don't buy it, don't see it, and, and know Ellie Y. Katz. And supported me, and uh, regardless of how hard they tried, I still won, um, and 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 I still won after 26 years. Right? You make a bunch of friends, and you also make a couple of people you're not so friendly with after 20 something years. You know, you're not perfect, and you do insult some people, um, but I still won because I'm there for the community. The community knows that, and um, the smart residents see it and don't buy into this schmear campaigns or whatever you want to call it, uh, negative campaigning. Um, because at the end of the day, when they need something done, they reach out to LEY Cats, they get it done. I, I'm responsive to them, and I'm there for their quality of life. Well, you, you I have, love you, it. You have the mind to absorb all of that. Will, with your permission, I wanted to just go to a, di- a slightly different subject. Sure. 20, 20 minutes into the call and into the uh, um, interview. So Ellie... What do you do with a property? Uh, you bought many properties. You own restaurants. Uh, you're, you're involved in a, in a um, 
a big communications international company. What do you do in the t- in the situations where they need they need they need a turnaround? So you bought a, a lot of experience in business is just that it's taking something that's that's in a bad position, it's turning it around. Look in the in, in the in the broad news now about FTX. Mm. Um, you know they they obviously did something criminal. There's people being prosecuted already, but they were, a man was brought in to turn it around, and that's his expertise. And he he waits for things to fail, and he goes in and he turns them around. But you've been involved in a lot of situations. Not every property you buy is perfect at the beginning. What do you? What is the? What are some of the? What are some of the the business keys that you you've taken out of your experience as an investor and a businessman? Okay, so we're going to close the door on the politics and we're going to go yes. into my business world because I, yeah, like I, like I don't to like do. to mix the apples and the oranges. I like to keep it separate, even though I'm one vehicle walking around doing you know, politics, but then I don't like to do the business as well. Um, that's, that's how you stay long-term in, in, in uh, politics. Um, so the answer to how I focus on my business world is... Um, I just focus on the goal of getting it done. I don't focus on the noise of how did we get here, although obviously you need to know a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I guess maybe some of my ADD and ADHD gives me this I need to get it accomplished uh, personality. Um, and uh, that is my skill set. I also, you know, live by the rule of I don't let perfect get in the way of good. You know, there's there are people that, Make it want it to be so perfect. And you can't change their personalities, even if you explain this to them. They want it to be so perfect, they just never get it done. I get it done. That's why, That's why. Uh, thank goodness, I've been okay in business. And that's why in all the different aspects that I focus on, I get it done. What do you, what do you make of that international issue of, uh, of uh, FTX? I, I, obviously, I... I I've only been following a little bit, just what my kids tell me. You know, they're mm. big in the Bitcoin and, you know, listening to the fact that he got picked up in the Bahamas. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know how you can lose so much money, uh, but I guess we're going to find out over the next few months and in, in, in years as they start. Uh, if if we find out. If well, we what find about, out, right. What about, you know, 25 million uh, sent into uh, politicians, some enormous number of uh, right. amount of money. right. Well, what what about the twelve trillion that the Pentagon ha- went missing? I mean, the thing is, is money goes missing everywhere, and who knows where that'll go? I think what's very interesting, though, just for the 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 topic of FTX, is this cryptocurrency world that we're living in in general. You know, where where people are putting all this money into something that doesn't technically exist. Right. You know. Um. You know. Obviously, certain ones hold functions over over others um but it's really interesting the world we're living in you can't you can't deny that people are backing these companies ftx ethereum bitcoin i can go on and on and on yeah i mean you you I remember reading about a ceo who was encouraging people to buy in his business to buy hundreds of hundreds of millions of dollars worth of bitcoin you know and he was encouraging other ceos to do it etc I don't know where they are today. I don't know where their company is today. The, the reality is my my feeling is that cryptocurrency is not going to go away. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do believe that it's going to be made um, a lot more stable. Yeah. Or people or regulated. Feel a more comfortable with mm-hmm. the one crypto or two crypto or three cryptocurrencies that they end up settling with. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We definitely have an interesting future over the next few years. What's happening with the uh, with the economy and cryptocurrency and all that type of stuff? Yeah. Warren, maybe we should create a signature coin. I think so. <laughs> signature fitness well, cryptocurrency. Major banks are are backing <laughs> it in different respects, not just from the standpoint of it being a coin, but in terms of the blockchain technology. You know, sure. About transaction transactions closing more quickly, enabling uh, finance to move over borders more easily, and so forth. Let's hope that um, good things happen. Generally, the, the whole world of um, investing tends to be you know, risky proposition. Um, you know, we see uh, tremendous volatility you know, in, the, in, the, uh, in all of the markets. Crypto is not unique to that. Um, any other? Uh, well, Warren, Warren knows me. I'm a gold guy. I'll, I'll always be a gold oh, guy. Really? I'll keep it simple. 
It ain't, it ain't unless unless we're pulling out from from uh, asteroids going by or space gold. We're we got a, a pretty pretty decent amount on Earth, so I'll stick with that for now. Nice. <laughs> how do you see uh, the, uh, how do you see the social media effect upon the uh, on the on the youth and uh, and is, how is that how? Listen, I have my nine year old, fifteen year old, and seventeen year old, and. Uh, um, I see how each one is affected by social media. I see how um, they, a lot of times they, you know, you mentioned it about communicating and, and we were talking about the bad communication, but the truth is I see the way that their heads are buried in their, in their device. We could be sitting around the dinner table and no one's even talking to each other. They're just texting whoever it is or even texting us. You know, I got to text my son at the dinner table. Hey, can you pass the mustard? You know, um, so how does it affect, I, I mean, I don't know, when I was growing up, what did I have, the Game Boy, and the Nintendo, uh, whatever it was, Donkey Kong? Uh, um, did I get lost in that? Yeah, do I feel that there's a lot more access for our youth and, and who knows what it is out there that's uh, dangerous? Yeah, I'm concerned about that as well. Yeah. I would, uh, my nephew is just about to turn four and uh, my other one just turned two. And one thing I, I'm very happy that my, my brother and my sister-in-law do is they, they haven't given them iPads or phones or anything yet. So I, I made that mistake. Listen, when you, have, <laughs> when, you have that, when you have kids, you want to give them everything, Of right? course, of course. So, like, everything new came out. They have, you know, the, so I got them, I got my, I don't know how old they were, 10, 11, 12, you know, um, you know smartphones or whatever it was back then. Um, originally, and, I, and I, I'm trying to hold back or hold the line for my nine-year-old daughter. But with that said, she does have access to an iPad. And, you know, nine out of ten times when you walk in the house, you could find her on the iPad. Um, so not very healthy. Um, so I don't know. It's concerning. Yeah. Do you uh, involve them in, as, or are they, are they wanting to be involved in, like, team sports or anything like that? Each one has their own personality and their, sure. own, and their own hobbies. Uh, my oldest one loves designing clothing, urban clothing, and he actually has agreements with stores. 17 years old, and I, get, I have to fly him to Vegas to meet with the store um, because he comes out with an unbelievable design. And then my middle one does his own podcasts, um, although I was never invited onto it. Oof. I know. Just in case he's watching, it's like, this was the subtle father hint. Yeah. And then my nine-year-old, I was talking to her this morning. She goes horseback riding and uh, ice skating. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, so they each have their own extracurricular activities. Well, Ellie, before we wrap it up, first and foremost, thank you so much for coming on today. This was a pleasure. Warren, thank you. I know it's not easy to get Warren on the signature cast, but we have him on this today. It's a real honor for me. I, I heard through the grapevine that Warren has been here twice, and this makes him number three. So it's an honor for me to be your third. Well, we, uh, we have the long view at, at Signature. We're, we have a, a, a 20, 30-year game plan, and I know when you think about your investments, your, your situation in Teaneck, you're not thinking about what's good for the next month or the next week. And when you look at those 56 houses of worship and the 40,000 residents and your varied interests, you're thinking out over the long term, what is it going to be like uh, at, at that point? I'm a lot older. Will is a... Will isn't even 30 years old yet, and he's, um, I'm forcing him to think long term because we want this place to be a, uh, a place that lasts, that gives people the benefit of enjoying it here, and that's why um, we're, we're, we're so encouraged by the success that Will, that you've had on this media, uh, in this media venue for, for our company and for yourself and for people like Ellie who come on board, and we could share just the sheer pleasure, the benefit of just sitting together for a few minutes, people listening to this. I hope you... Enjoy it. I hope it's just the beginning of seeing Ellie on this again and in so many Abs ways connected to absolutely. ourselves and our community and our company. I like being in the middle. Right? <laughs> Wasn't that the starting of your... Right? That's it. That's it. Got to be right, right smack dab in the middle. Well, Ellie, if you could give our, our viewers just uh, a couple words of wisdom if you want to finish off today, and whether it's from the political Ellie White Cats or the businessman, whichever you decide, a couple words of advice. Success is not final. Failure is not final. It's the courage to continue that counts. I saw that on a wall. <laughs> and I don't know if you announced that often. 
I, it's, it's so true. It's a great quote. It's from Winston Churchill. Success is not final. Failure is not final. It is the courage to continue that counts. And, you know, I say every morning, I drive my kids to school, and I say every morning to them, have a successful day. But most important, don't let anybody knock you off your horse. You know, at the end of the day, we realize, especially now, as life has become a little more challenging with all the other noise, et cetera, going on, that there's so many opportunities for one to get distracted and to get um, angry at something that happens. You've got, if you don't um, stay focused, you don't get back on that horse, you won't be there for the opportunities that come to you mm -hmm. that are going to be positive opportunities. So I say that every morning to them, don't let you know anyone knock you off your horse. Get back on, keep going. That's it. That's another episode of the Signature Cast where we talk bodybuilding business and everything in between. Thank you both so much. Have a wonderful day, guys. Thank you very much for having me. Perfect.